Previously, on the picture of Dora Gray, Miss Howard, about to begin a journey in the beautiful city of love, Paris, came to say her goodbyes to the gorgeous Dora without knowing her fate. Good evening, Dora. B, what brings you here at this hour? I'm on my way to the station. I'm leaving for Paris on the night train. I won't be back for some time. I had to see you before I left. I want to speak to you seriously. Seriously? Don't look at me with those eyes. Oh, you make it so difficult, Dora. What is all this about me? I hope it's not about myself. I'm tired of myself tonight. I want to be someone else. Well, I'm sorry. It is about yourself. Dora, I think you should know that the most dreadful things are said about you in London. I love scandals about other people, but scandals about myself don't interest me. They're so predictable. <laughs> Don't shrug like that. You have such an influence, Dora. Let it be for good, not evil. They say that you corrupt everyone that you meet. B, this is absurd. I'm incapable of anything of the kind. You know me. Do I know you? I wonder. Do I know you? Before I could answer that, I should have to see your soul. To see my soul? Yes, to see your soul. But obviously I can't do that. Only God can. <laughs> You shall see it yourself tonight. I shall show you my soul. This is blasphemy, Dora. You must not say things like that. They are horrible and they don't mean anything. You think so? The repast of the room and began the ascent, Miss Howard following close behind. They walked softly, as women naturally do at night. Dora opened the door and went in. A current of air passed them, but of them shuddered. You insist on knowing me? Yes. I am delighted. So you think that it's only God who sees the soul we? Draw that curtain back and you will see mine. You are mad, Dora, or playing a part. Mad? Mad? I will show you madness. <gasps> there was something in the expression of the hideous thing on the canvas that filled her with disgust and loathing. Good heavens, it was Dora's gray's own face she was looking at. The horror, wherever it was, had not yet entirely married in Mabilla's beauty. What have you done to my picture? I haven't touched it, B. Then who has done this? No one, B. No one but yourself. Read the signature. What does this mean? Why has it changed? Years ago, when I was a girl, you introduced me to Harriet. And she taught me to be proud of my flawless appearance. And you finished the portrait of me that revealed the wonder of beauty. But there is no beauty in this painting, Dora. Why has it changed? In a mad moment, I made a wish. Perhaps you would call it a prayer. If only it was the other way. If only I could be forever young and the picture grow old. For this, I would give everything. Yes, I would give my soul for that. No, the thing is impossible. You told me you had destroyed it. I was wrong. It has destroyed me. I can't believe this is my picture. Can you see your romance in it? My romance, as you call it. As you called it. There was nothing evil in it, nothing shameful. This is the face of a devil. It is the face of my soul. Christ, what a thing to say, what a thing I must have worshipped. Each of us has heaven and hell in him be. Good God, Dora, what a lesson, what an awful lesson. We must pray. Your prayer was answered once. The prayer of your repentance will also be answered. Pray, Dora, pray. What is it that one was taught to say in one's childhood? Let us not into temptation, forgive us our sins. Let us say that together. Oh God, I worship you too much. I am punished for it. You worship yourself too much. We are both punished. It is too late, B. It is never too late, Dora. Let us kneel down and try if we can remember a prayer. Isn't there a verse somewhere? Though your sins be as scarlet, yet I will make them as white as snow. Those words mean nothing to me now. Dora Gray glanced at the picture, and suddenly an uncontrollable feeling of hatred for Miss Howell came over her. The mad passion of a hunted animal is still within her, and she loaded the woman who was seated at the table more than she had ever loaded anything in her whole life. Do you remember the events of the night before, and for a moment the same hatred for Miss Howell came back to her. She felt that if she continued thinking about it, she would go mad. 
My lady, do you need something? Take this letter to Miss Campbell's house and make sure she receives it. Of course, my lady. Dora became horribly agitated. What if Alana Campbell was out of England? What if she refused to come? Alana Campbell was an extremely intelligent young woman. Science was her passion and she had a chemistry laboratory in... Excuse me, my lady. Miss Campbell is here. Alana, this is very kind of you. Thank you for coming. I decided never to enter your home again, Grace. But you said it was a matter of life and death. Alana, in a look at the room at the top of this house, a dead woman is sitting on a table. She has been dead ten hours now. Don't look at me like that. Who the woman is, why and how she died is not important to you. What you have to do Stop, is... Stop, Grey. I don't want to know anything more. Keep your horrible secrets to yourself. I don't want to be mixed up in your life. It doesn't interest me. Alana, it will have to interest you. I'm very sorry, but you're the only woman who can save me. You're a scientist. You know all about chemistry. You must destroy the body upstairs so that nothing remains of it. You're mad, Dora, to make this monstrous confession. I have nothing to do with this matter. Do you think I'm going to ruin my reputation for you? She committed suicide, Alana. Who drove her to it? You, I suppose. Do you still refuse to do this for me? Of course I refuse. I don't care what shame comes on you. You deserve it all. You've come to the wrong woman. Go to someone of your friends. Don't come to me. Alana, it was murder. I killed her. You don't know how she made me suffer, although she may not have intended it. Murder? Good God, Dora. Is that what you have come to? I won't report you to the police. It's none of my business, but I'll have nothing to do with it. Wait a moment. All I ask of you is to perform a scientific experiment. Think of the position I'm in. We were friends once, Alana. Don't speak about those days, Dora. They're dead. I absolutely refuse to do anything. You refuse? Yes. I beg you. It's useless. I'm so sorry for you, Alana. But you leave me no alternative. I have a letter written already. Here it is. You see the address. If you don't help me, I will send it. You know what the result will be. It's impossible for you to refuse now. The thing has to be done. Face it and do it. I can't do it. You have no choice. Okay, I'll do it. But I need some things from my laboratory. You're wicked, absolutely wicked. Alan, you've saved my life. At about two o'clock, the servant returned with a large box filled with things Miss Campbell had asked for. It was long after seven when Miss Campbell came back into the library. She was pale but absolutely calm. I've done what you asked me to. And now, goodbye. Let us never see each other again. You saved me from Reno, Lana. I can't forget that. As soon as Miss Campbell had as left, as Ms. Campbell she, had went left upstairs. she went upstairs. There was a horrible, there was smell, a horrible of nitric acid smell of nitric acid in the room. Acid but the, the, room. Thing, that had but been the thing that had been sitting at the was table gone. was gone.